definitely. First job that I uh, that I get in um, England, it's um, it was at London Bridge. It was in two restaurants, down in the basement. When I started to work there, the kitchen was very, very dirty, and I try my best to clean the kitchen as good as I can. One day, the chef and I were sitting down, talking about, she was telling me a story about England, and I was telling her a story about Jamaica. The manager came in the kitchen and saw us sitting down, talking because there was nothing much left to be done in the kitchen. She did not order the chef to get up and do something, but she she came to me and she um, pointing her finger around, telling me to do certain things, which way there was nothing to be done because the kitchen was spotless clean. And she have a bad habit when she's talking, she pint her finger. I told her, don't pint her finger at me when she's talking to me. And uh, she came up too close to my face pointing her finger. I get up and I get hold of her hand and I bite her finger and she scream. I will never forget the way that she scream. And she walk up, walk away and go into the office and she sucked me immediately. Her sister came in the kitchen and she said to me, Amelda, please don't leave. I will stand by you. I was so upset that I walk out of the kitchen and I get in the bus. When she saw me, I walk out of the kitchen and I get the bus. And I cry from London Bridge to the job centre in Brixton. I was sent to another job immediately and I was getting twice the amount of money um, for, compared to what she was paying me. And that was, I, went, I get a nice job, very nice people that I was working with, very friendly. I would never forget two Irish girls that was working there. And they were so friendly. They let me feel as if I was in Jamaica. Then I started to speak as if they were speaking Jamaican language. When ne I never forget the laugh and the excitement with the two girls. One was named Josephine and one named Eileen. I'll never forget those two girls. They did let me feel so comfortable. I'll do it. It was um, just a few weeks that I come in this country when I came in this country. They let me feel as if I was in Jamaica. It was fantastic girl. No way that I'll forget those two girls. <laughs> And how long did you work with them for? I worked for them for about, um, about four or about six weeks, six, six months. That's how long I worked with them. And um, I moved on to other jobs because sometimes I was so upset I did definitely want to go back to Jamaica. But to earn the money or to settle down into another job, it was hard for me to settle down. Then the only thing that could set, let me settle down in this country was children. My first girl was born the 22nd of February, 1962. She could not stop me to settle, stop me settle down in this country. My second girl was born 1975. I still were tormented, definitely want to go home. My third girl, was born 75 and she stopped me from going home because when I have these three children I decided that um, I cannot think about going back to Jamaica. I got to um, make up my mind to look after my children. They were difficult to look after. My husband and I didn't see things eye to eye so he was no help to me. The only help that I really did receive came from Brixton police. Whenever we have an argument, 
and sometimes the argument was very strong. Then uh, the only thing I could do sometimes is walk out of the house. I remember he get hold of me one day, hold me by the, hold my clothes, and rip my um, my dress, and I walk out and I go to Brixton Police Station. I was sent from Brixton Police Station to Camwell Green Court. The policeman that takes statement from me that day, he was very, very nice. He was more like relatives. The way he speak to me, he was like relatives. And um, on my way home, I sit down in a park, Camwell Green Park, and he was going for his lunch, and he saw me sitting down in a park calming down my, my nerves. And he come over to where I was sitting, and the two of us was talking, and he said to me, if I continue talking to you, I'm going to late going back to work, and I'm not going to be able to, to um, eat my lunch. So he said to me, if you get any more harassment from your husband, call us, and we'll come for him immediately. So Brixton police, and the policemen that I met at Camwell Green, they were fantastic. They, they, were, they were like relatives to me. They wasn't just like an ordinary police. They were like relatives. They were fantastic. I, I never forget Brixton police and the one that I've met in Camwell Green. So. And did you see them a lot around in Camberwell? No, it's mostly Brixton, but um, most of the police that I did met in Brixton, they're not there anymore. Probably they gone somewhere else or they transfer to somewhere else. But um, I have to give Brixton police good name and the police that I met in Camwell, good name. No problem, I never have any problem with police. Community, community in Brixton was, um, people were friendly, very nice. Nice to say hello, good morning, or whatever. They were very nice because everybody was poor. No television, no fridge. The most thing we they have, no central heating. Most we use paraffin, paraffin oil, and um, no carpet on the floor. Everything was, although we were poor. Everything was nice, very, very nice. Every weekend we could go to a party. We look after each other's children, take it in terms. It was very wonderful. And um, things were so cheap. It makes you wonder why things were so cheap. You go in the market with five pounds, you're coming home with change. You get the best of beef, you get everything. Potato, everything was cheap. So that was the, um, the most fantastic things about um, England, is the cheapness. But people didn't have many things to their con um, convenient. When we make jelly, in, jelly, you didn't have fridge to put the jelly in. We used to put it out on the window ledge on, in the night. And in the morning when you wake up, the jelly was frozen. Oh boy, it was a wonderful day. Those days will never come back because there were wonderful days. Although we didn't have certain things so were convenient, we used to keep our home very clean. We used to use mansion floor polish on the floor. When you go in the house, the floor was spotless clean and shiny because everybody used to take it in terms to clean the passage. It was wonderful. I remember my landlady, she was like a sister to me. If I come out of the house in the morning and go and do a little shopping and leave her, especially on a Saturday morning, when I saw her in Brixton, she reacted to me as if she were, we were fighting because she was saying, why did you leave me? You know, it was wonderful days. I'll never forget those days. Although things were poor, we were poor. We only have color television. We didn't have color television. Just black and white television. And, um, but now, you reach the stage where people have fridge, they have microwave, 
They have color television. They have many things that we didn't have way back in the 60s. So it's like there's no poor people anymore because every one of us have certain things that we didn't have in the 60s. So it's like we are more independent and we are not all that friendly that like what we used to be in the 60s. Not all that friendly. Because I don't know if it's because of the um, materialistic things that we have now that let us be so independent and not all that friendly with one another. Because some um, houses was just a couple of thousand or hundred pounds. But now it's like you're going up to millions. If you don't have a lot of money, you cannot afford a home. And you can't even rent a room. Because in the 60s, a room used to be just a few pounds a week. But now, if you don't have um, hundreds, it's surprising when I said when someone paying 500 pounds a month for a room, for a flat. I always said to myself, how can they afford to pay so much money for a flat? And it's amazing because looking back, it was just maybe a few pounds a week or a month for a flat. So, and we used to, um, everything was cheap because when you go out to work, you just get a few pounds. But you know definitely you could live off those few pounds. My feelings is that most young people that um, would like to have a flat, even at the age of 16, 17 going off, they could stay with their parents for a little longer. They don't definitely have to um, leave home and say, well, they are um, looking for a council flat or, you know. They could stay with their parents for a while longer and then uh, make sure that they have enough money. I don't even think some of them would have enough money to buy a house. So it would be wise if some of them spend more time with their parents. Yeah, because um, having children just to get a council flat, it's not worth it. Because I know a lot of parents, their children leave home and their parents have a flat or a room that they could stay in. So it's not wise what some young people are doing. It's not wise to leave home and their parents have a room that they could stay in for a while longer, maybe a couple of years longer. And, and all, um, my second girl did have her own flat, and now she's living with me. And it is difficult for her to go, whatever money she get off her flat when she sell it, she can't afford to buy another place because um, everything is so expensive now. So she have to stay with me. And she's staying with me, that doesn't mean she's gonna able to um, by um, a own, or her own place, because now she get redundant. She was working from, with the post office, now she get redundant, and now she's working maybe just an ordinary job at Morrison's, so she cannot afford to buy her own place. And even she's living with me, she's still difficult for her, and it's difficult for me, because um, I'm a pensioner, and I, everything now changed for me because she's living with me. So my earn, my pension now is gone down because when I, if I make claims, I was told that um, I had someone live with me. So everything now for me changed. So I'm worse off instead of better off. And this is how it goes. Because when, before my daughter came to live with me, I could save a little of my pension. But now seeing then, she's with me. It's like, a, it's a wrong thing I've done. Because now my pension, some of my pension I have to go to my daughter. And I can't afford to live this way. So life changed sometimes, not for good, but for the worst. And this is what's happening. You have someone living in your home, although you're a pensioner, you get in your little pension. When you go to claims anything, you were told that um, you had someone sharing with you. So that's make life difficult. Not that I don't want relatives or my family, any of my family to live with me, but it's only make life difficult. Yeah, there's fewer opportunities now, but way back in the 60s, we have great opportunity 
but things was cheap, so we were better off. You go in the shop now to buy a decent little dress, it's more like you're going up to 40, 50 pounds for that dress if you want something that looks decent to wear go somewhere. But in the 60s, you could get beautiful clothes and it wasn't all that cheap. So now things change. Everything looks nice and the, the quality of clothes now cannot be compared to the quality of clothes in the 60s. Because when I go into the store, if I want a decent dress, sometimes I just come out and say, what a lot of rubbish. That's what I've said, because it cannot be compared to what we used to wear in the 60s. Yeah, no good. I don't even go to buy clothes because I would search and search and search and search and I don't find anything that is decent. Sometimes you go in marks, you better get a decent skirt or a decent dress. You go to those places. But anywhere else, marks and mollies and all those places, you might get a decent dress or a decent skirt. But I cannot compare now to way back in the 60s as far as clothes is concerned. So do you feel that people are better off now or worse off now overall? With certain things, the worst off. But with certain things, like money, you're better off. But in certain things, you're better off now with money. But in, in the 60s, you were better off with less money and you get more beautiful clothes with less money and nice clothes. But now you get more money and you're worse off with certain things. And how about community? Do you think we're better off now or were we better off before with community? With community, with, I think you're better. I think you're worse off now because I remember years ago, you could have public bath, where people go to public bath and have a bath, and wash themselves, wash clothes. Because I used to work at a public bath in Lambeth Walk, and I used to watch, look at people come in dirty, as if they were sleeping in mud. And they come in and they have their bath and their shower and things like that. So we're better off years ago than what we are now. Because sometimes you go down the street, you see people, some people, they definitely look as if they need a shower or a bath. But years ago, it was okay for people to go to the public bath and have their shower and things like that. Lambeth Walk, laundry, have bath, shower, and, and uh, wash where you can wash, it, wash your clothes. Lots, loads of machine and loads iron board, you can wash your clothes, stand there and do your ironing. And that was fantastic. All those things is out of the way now. I remember one day I've seen um, a man come in with a woman. I don't know if he just find her on the street or something, but she was so dirty. And he makes sure she have her shower and you would be surprised to see how clean she was when she going home. <laughs> So all these things now is out of the way, which way years ago those things was helpful to certain people who don't have a home, people who are homeless. They could go to the bath, wash themselves, wash their clothes, and they're clean. It's a shame to see those things is all not exist anymore. Yes, yes, We're much closer to one another. And why do you feel that people are not close together anymore? They're too independent. They're too independent because they're getting more money and uh, things like that. So they, that's how they get their independency. So, and that does um, make a lot of difference to what happened, what was happening years ago. But I love years ago. I would I keep looking back and wish if um, things could change so that we could go back to, you know, way back in the 60s and 70s, just for the cleansiness of certain things, you know? You're watching people come in, like in a bath, a public bath, 
and they have to wash themselves and they go home clean. They can come back maybe a few days after and then they do the same thing. So that was good. As far as I'm concerned, that was very good. Certain things I wish if it didn't change. Five things I would um, make sure public baths keep open. And the laundry, keep all public, like laundry, like what the government, what, um, like Lambeth is responsible for. All those things stay open. Don't close those things. Certain area, public toilet, stay open. Don't close. Because right now, McDonald's seems to be taking a lot of people when they, um, with the toilet. I remember going to McDonald's one day, it was a summer and it was hot and I could smell the toilet because, you know, a lot of people go, go to the toilet when the um, public toilet is closed. I go back in um, a next um, restaurant, next um, public place like a store where people are allowed to come and use the toilet and that wasn't clean, and the smell of it wasn't clean. So those things is not, what's going on now is not right. Public toilets, um, in certain area, public toilets should stay open, and not just depends on go to McDonald's or certain places to use the toilet. It's not hygiene, it's bad. So you've got another four, the first, that's the first thing. What are the other four things you would take? <laughs> But there are four, four other four things. You're allowed four more things. <laughs> public bath stay open. Public laundry stay open. And um, what is? I don't even. No, I know the public bath should stay open. The public laundry should stay open. Public toilet should stay open. What is? Would you bring the good quality, cheaper clothes back? Yeah, cheaper clothes back and good quality. Mm, yeah. What about the market? Oh, market. Oh, don't mention the market. Don't mention the market. Too much food. Too much food and too much fish. By so doing, you're not getting the fresh food that we used to get years ago. Not because there's too much now. Too much meat. We used to get fresh meat. But now it's too much. Sometimes when you look at some of the things that is in the market, you don't even want to spend money to buy some of those things because they're too much. You used to have plenty. Men, ladies selling, have their salad stall. But now, like in Brixton, is one, just a few, maybe two or three stalls with sell salad and fruits. But years ago, it was just, you know, not a lot. So, you know, definitely you was getting fresh salad, fresh everything, fresh food, fruits. But now things change. Too much of every, too much, too much things. Too much things. Oh, when you look and see the amount of fish in the market, you're scared to even go on to some of the stall. There's too much. <laughs> scared. And what the pe what about the people? Which people would you bring back from the sixties to now? Like people such as it could be people that you've met, it could be people you've worked with, any people that you'd want to Yeah, elderly people, those that we used to associate ourselves with, with dancing and things like that, used to be good. With dancing and every week, you know, you can go to a party, look after one another, children, for a couple of hours until when you come back from the party. So I would like to see a lot of the old elderly people come back. Yeah, a lot of them passed away anyway but they were excited people, very nice people. So I would like to see, you know, 
a lot of them that I used to be amongst, not so well. Um, not to, um, I know a lot of them, a few of them that I used to work with. You know, I met a few of them in Brixton. I say hello and you know, things like that. Oh, I haven't seen you for so many years. Oh, you're still around. I said, yes, I don't pass away. I'm still here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they were nice people. When you walk along the street, you see women dress like in the 60s. And again, you'll see women dress as if they're five years old. Because when they sit down, they just sit on their knickers. They don't sit down as if they're sitting on their dress. They sit as if they're five years old. And it's, you know, what, it's surprising to see women, some women dress that way. Really surprising. What St. Paul said, every man to their one order. What can you do, what can you say? If you say something, probably you just get, maybe get a right hand in your mouth or something. <laughs> something. <laughs> You cannot say nothing. You just have to look and then shut up. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's the way it goes. That's life now. That's life. Nothing can do about it. Nothing can say about it. You just have to look and then say, keep, you know, just go your ways. Mind your own business. <laughs> why, why do you think? Younger than I think that time has changed so much that it seems as if there's not much control over certain things. Because when you go in the, um, the store and you see certain clothes made for women, you, you, you think about it, is it for women or children? Because women, some of them are just like children. So it's just... No shame or no respect. They just dress the way they want to dress. And to, as far as I'm concerned, they're only um, let men have a good look to see, you know. You, you walk along the street and you see certain women dress the way that they dress. You, men don't stop looking around because it's like they cannot believe what they've seen. They can't believe that a woman could, a woman could dress that way. So it's like some type of ex excitement and enticing for men, some men, because some men don't really have respect for women. They look and they would pass remarks, bad remarks, and that's it. Oh. Is that something that worries you? No, it don't worry me because um, no, it don't worry me at all. You know because um. I can't tell someone what to do. I can't even tell my children what to do. You know, because um, they'll probably just send me off. <laughs> so you don't worry me at all. But it's worry me sometimes when I've seen it's like men dress properly with their in their nice clothes. And when you look, you see a woman um dress probably into a little shorts that when they turn around, you can actually see their knickers or something. But you have some men that would dress properly. And you have some women that dress properly and dress, you respect them. And when you look, you can see a different picture of, of certain women. But what can you do? Because the clothes is in the market for in the store, so it got to sell. And this is the reason why you see some women dress the way that they dress. Because it's there for them, it's, it's exciting and it's enticing. So it's there for them to, you know, do whatever they want to do, it's their body. They want to expose themselves, they expose themselves. And no one to say, well, you're not allowed to um, dress that way in this country. They just dress the way they want to dress. No respect and no no one to stand by and say, well, oh, that's disgraceful. What can they do? What can they say? You just have to go, go along with the flow. <laughs> I've said nothing. 
the changes will be, um, say, well, people get out of the, um, the corners. Because when you come on to Sundays, you see a lot of people coming out of many side streets. They come in from church. The many side streets, especially in Brixton area, uh, you see people coming out from little corners. I would like to see, you know, because I do believe that um, too much. You, you cannot um, tell people what to do because they have a life to live. But there's too many people calling up on God and they don't know definitely what type of God they're calling upon. And that is, seems to um, bring down a lot of things on us, some of us. And us, and the land, in the world, and a lot of things in the world. Why not support if there is a big organization? Why not um, try to deal with that big organization? And if you cannot join with the big organization to listen and learn, why not um, stay in your home and keep your home clean? And if you want to talk to God, just stay in your home and talk to God or pray if you want to stay in your home. But to come in from many little side streets, I don't think that is right. I don't think that is right. You can talk to God in your home, pray to God in your home, keep your home clean so that you know definitely His Spirit will come in. Because we were told that cleansiness is next to God. So instead of being into so many little side streets, why not get out and stay in your home sometime? Another time, if you want to go out and join with a group of people, there you go, you do whatever you want to do. But I believe that too much little, going little corners, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to me. I don't really go to church, but I learn. And when I'm ready, I know where to go. I'm not going to go into little corner, little side street and all that, say I'm in there praying to God. No, I don't believe he'll come in there. I don't believe that. You keep your home clean and then, you know, things will work out. You will learn from him there. So what I learned, it just come natural. But it's still able to pass on because when you have changes, in life, it's not easy for people to accept certain changes. They just want to listen to the same old story. And that makes life difficult, very, very difficult. Yeah. I wish if I could um, get through. I wish if I could get through because I know what I learned is the truth. But it's only up to people to stop and think. Because I stop and I think about certain things. And I know what I learn is not fake. It's just to um, get through. What next? <laughs> All right. So um, what I'll do is I'll stop recording now. Yeah. And then. Uh...